G'day folks and welcome to Cinema Australia. My name's Matthew Eels and uh, tonight I'm joined by uh, Animals Director Sophie Hyatt. Sophie, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And uh, we are in a working cinema here so you might hear some uh, coffee machines going off and some popcorn crackling, but that just sort of part of the mood, isn't it? Yeah, it's the vibe <laughs> of the cinema. Yeah. Um, Sophie, I'm so happy to be speaking to you. Um, uh, Sophie was one of the first pe people that uh, I interviewed when I first started Cinema Australia, so it's exciting to have you here. Um, so tell us about Animals. Yeah, I mean, Animals is a uh, film that's about two women uh, that are in the thick of a friendship that's lasted a long time. And they're, you know, they drink a lot, they take a lot of drugs, they are rejecting kind of conventional life. Um, and then they kind of have to work out if, as they reach 30-ish, they maybe want to shift that a bit. It's based on the, a book by a British author called Emma Jane Unsworth, and she also wrote the screenplay. So tell us about Emma and, uh, and your first meeting with her. I read the book and I read, um, they wanted to make it into a, to a movie, so they'd already written the script, but it was really early draft of that. And I, I really loved the book. I mean, I, I, what I read it and I felt like I was with these characters that felt, you know, very familiar, like really visceral, I connected to them, but I felt like I hadn't seen much of them. And I think Emma has this distinct ability to feel like she's being sort of witty and almost surface, not quiet, but like fun. And then you think, oh my God, she's telling me something that's really truthful and raw and a bit ugly. And it becomes very beautiful, yes. you know? Um, so I sent back to Emma and Sarah, the British producer, um, a big long letter. It was like 11 pages with images and responses to the characters and things that I thought we could do in the movie. For some reason, I just went for it. And um, we talked on Skype. We had these great Skypes. And then I went over to the UK when we started working. So we spent a couple of weeks together in a room working out what we would make in the movie. Mm. Uh, a lot of people going into the movie would have uh, read the book. So what are some of the differences between the book and the film that you can tell us about? I mean, the crucial difference, I mean, apart from that one's a book and one's a movie, uh, the crucial difference is that it was set in Manchester, the book, and we moved the film to Dublin. Mm. Um, so that's a big difference. There are some interesting differences, like the sister of the central character, Laura, um, who's pregnant in the film, spoilers, um, she was the other character's sister in the book. So, and there are things like the kind of, uh, there's two love interests, the second love interest was a much older character than he ended up being in the film. Things like that, it's hard for me to remember. What we decided to do was like, try and maintain kind of an essential idea of the, of the book and the feeling and the tone and the um, conflict, uh, but not necessarily keep the exact same story. And having the author, mm -hmm adapting the film it means that you can kind of do whatever you want. Like there's this great freedom that happens. So she was open to all of these changes? She, yeah, she was great. And you know, it was her first movie and so she was ready and raring to go. But she, thankfully for me, uh, really embraced a very collaborative approach. Like I have always worked with writers very closely. Um, I'm in the room with them a lot, loads of notes, loads of conversations, never really telling them what to do, but asking lots of questions yes. and she, Fully embrace that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, these two main characters are extremely relatable. I mean, everyone's going to find something that they can relate to. Um, they hold up a mirror um, that most of us might not want to look into. <laughs> yeah. But what was it that uh, you related to the most about about these two main characters? <laughs> it's going to sound so funny. Uh, there's this thing in the book where the central character talks about the smell of other people. It's always talking about smells. And I, it's sort of related to the kind of work that I'd done before. I felt like that was the idea of having a body that, that can smell, that, that smells itself, that, that feels desire, that feels hungover, all of those qualities. I feel like they're really present in your day-to-day -day life. You know, you're like, oh God, I've got to eat, or I've got to go to the toilet. Or, um, all these things that your body, you know, drives which we don't see much in storytelling, because we kind of like retain some sort of bigger picture thing. Yes. But these are the things of our everyday life, mm. these kind of animalistic urges, let's call them, um, that, that kind of rule us, or we're trying to work out how to reconcile those urges with our understanding of being in culture and the expectations on us and, and being part of, you know, a civilised 
place. Mm, mm. And so I think it was that that really drew me. Right, and it's very interesting. I had the worst BO today. And it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it smells, we're like, especially yeah. women, it's this idea that we're so deodorised yes. and like we're so removed mm. from those mm. um, parts of ourselves. But none of us really are. No. We all live inside these fleshy bodies. Mm. Um, yeah. That's interesting that you, that you said that because uh, I thought that if, you know, most people would say, oh, the drinking side of it or the partying side of it in my youth. That's a, it's a, it's a fantastic answer. <laughs> um, so even though uh, it's not the main point of the film, uh, it says a lot about our drinking culture, which a lot of Australians will relate to. Mm. Um, what, what was the drinking like on set? Uh, some, actually, someone who saw the film before I did said to me, um, dr watch it with a bottle of wine or watch yeah. it with a glass of wine. Was there much drinking on set? Was, was <laughs> Not specifically on the set, mm. but around the set, we certainly did drink. I mean, the Irish do drink. Yes. I mean, that's the thing. Australians drink, but wow, the Irish really drink. Um, look, there's this weird thing where people come out of the movie and they're like, I really am never going to drink again, mm -hmm. or I really want a glass of wine now. Yeah. And I sort of have both. Um, like the characters in the film, there are times where we all partied quite hard, mm. but we were also kind of creating something. So like some of the other characters, there's a diligence around that, you know, that you do have to maintain and be able to work. Mm. There was certainly a feeling that we needed to kind of embrace something about the story, and that meant getting to know each other in a certain way. Oh, yes. So that was around, mm. yeah. We were a tight, intimate cast mm. and crew. And um, we were kind of like on school camp because we were filming somewhere else. So we were all getting to know each other like that. Yes. So it was part of it. Um, but no one's really, truly, you know, too far down that path. Everyone really wanted to make the movie and, and be inside what they were doing. So yes. It was a mix. Right. Um, so the film's the first ever Australian Irish co production, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a mix of Irish, Australian, and, and British crew. Mm -hmm. Are they a shortcut? How did she understand the word that anyone was saying? <laughs> yeah, and the character of Tyler was always American in the story. Right. So we knew we were going to cast someone American. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, weirdly, the Irish and the Americans have this, you know, their, their hard art, their R's mm -hmm. uh, are kind of similar. Yeah, some of the Irish is so full on yeah. um, and hard to understand, but mostly it's that kind of central Dublin accent is okay. Um, but I remember when Alia first came on to set and her American accent really shocked me, or in the read, I was like, whoa, American, you know. But it was most difficult for Holiday. Right, because, really? well, Holiday is British, she's yes. from Manchester, yeah. and she was doing Dublin accent. Mm. But she had a director and a DP that were Australian. Yes. The first was British, uh, her co star was American, yeah. and then her sister in the film and her lover in the film are both Northern Irish, which mm. is a quite a different accent. Mm. And so she just had all these different accents around her trying to maintain this central Dublin accent. So we had people on the set, um, the sound, uh, the boom operator and the script supervisor who were like really listening for her accent. Mm. She, she wanted them to, you know, be really brutal with her. Right. And of course, she'd worked with another Australian uh, prior, Bruce Beresford, um, on uh, Bonnie and Clyde, the TV yeah. series. Oh. Yeah, she's, she's quite amazing. Yeah. Um, I was looking back on uh, the 50, on 52 Tuesdays last night and uh, the interview that you and I did at that time. And um, it was interesting because in it you mentioned about the uh, collaborative process of, of working on that film. And uh, I wondered how much of a collaboration this film was, um, it, or, or it was to bring animals to life. Mm. Was it much of a process compared to 52 Tuesdays? Um, which was, it, it was quite complex. It wasn't a traditionally structured film like animals. No. Is. 52 Tuesdays came from the team that I work with all the time. And, so, and also we were learning in some ways how to make something. We shot it every Tuesday for a year and we rehearsed as we went. The actors were all new actors and we wrote the story as we went along. And so, and it was with, I mean, I was writing with the person that I've um, known for so long that I grew up with, you know. Matthew McCormack. Matthew McCormack, yeah. yeah. And he, and, and we collaborated for a long time, you know. So there's a real difference. That's a very unusual film. With animals, I was hesitant to go into something as a director, something I like hadn't generated myself. Oh, yes. But I loved this material and... Yeah, I mean, what I discovered making it was that that's just what I do. It's like I reveal myself to the people I'm working with, be that Emma, the writer, or the cast, or the crew, and I ask them to reveal themselves back to me. 
and I feel like we create a real intimacy, that's what we do. And that's collaboration, like we keep a question alive. I'm always asking questions and I'm, I'm curious about what their response is rather than telling them all the time what to do. Yes. You know, it's like my vision, if you want to call it that, includes all of that, is part of that. So yeah, I mean, that's my favourite part of it, is the collaboration. It's and that really comes part. through. It it's really comes through in this film. Sorry, you were saying it's oh, so hard. It's, it's hard to build all those relationships mm. and to maintain them, but that's my favourite mm -hmm. um, And uh, as well as Matthew, who you just mentioned, the screenwriter, oh, he was a script editor on this, um, you also brought along Brian, the cinematographer, mm -hmm. so I can't remember his last Brian name. Mason. Brian Mason. Who's, yeah, sorry. Brian is the cinematographer and the editor of Animals. Yes. Uh, also my partner. Oh, so right. we are, like, right. when we talk about intimacy, yeah. <laughs> the team is fairly intimate. Yes. You know? yeah. And uh, we brought Renata Henschke, our costume designer, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other team over yeah. as well. Wow. Um, it, just for a second, can we just talk about that shot in uh, Animals uh, when um, uh, the two main characters uh, find the piano in the bath mm -hmm. and the camera just slowly moves towards the window? Just keep an eye out for that one because it's, it's a stunning shot. Well, you know what? <laughs> We're talking to Brian about that the other day and he reminded me that we had watched Basquiat, which is a great film that we both love, and there was a moment where it kind of goes across with him into a venue, mm. and we, we were like, that would be amazing for that scene. Oh. And so, it's a, I mean, it's, they're very different moments, yes. but the, um, it was a direct reference. Wow, there you go, okay, yeah. all righty. Um, so, uh, um, uh, have you noticed a difference in uh, how the film is being received by Irish audiences and Australian audiences during these Q&As and, mm -hmm. and screenings? I've only done one Q&A in Ireland, um, and it was brilliant. We had a really fun, amazing night at Galway Film Festival. A few of the cast had had a few too many drinks. Um, maybe I had as well. Um, no, it was good. It was really fun. I feel like the Irish people I know have been really responsive to it, and luck luckily um, I think they feel like it's very Dublin, which is a great... Um, we're really pleased about that. Um, Australians and Irish... There is similarity between us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we they're very similar cultures. Yes. Um, I feel like it's viewed in a similar way in the two countries, mm -hmm. but I haven't been over there while it's happening. No. So I wish I'd like to hear more. Yeah. Yeah. I spend a little bit more time in the UK, and they like they really embrace it as a and and you know Emma's British, so there is a voice in the film that's very. British as well. Yes. Yeah. How important are these collaborations? Because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the first ever Irish Australian uh, film uh, collaboration. Mm -hmm. How important is that for the Australian film industry? I think it's increasingly important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we need to find ways to finance, and film is just getting harder and harder to finance, particularly indie stuff. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's really important for Australians to be collaborating internationally and to finance internationally as well. And it's really important for us to find a way to like have our own voice as filmmakers, but that doesn't necessarily mean the Australian accent, yes. you know, to, to find other ways to be telling stories because we live really internationally now, mm. so we need to speak to the international audience too. Great answer. Hey, um, just before we wrap up, can I uh, ask, so we were talking about Jennifer Kent earlier, uh, what is it with uh, you lot? Because so far <laughs> I've had Jennifer, I've had a Sophie Hyde film, and I've had a Mira Folks film, Judy and Punch, where you all do terrible things with bloody babies. Can you please stop that? Oh my God, <laughs> I've said that to those guys as well. Are you serious? It was like, well, those two do some really bad things. Yes. Ours is like marginal. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's not weird as bad. That all three of those movies. I know. And we've been out a lot together mm. with the films. Mm. They all have babies, and yes. they're like, whoa. I mean, there's some brutality going on there. It really is. Yeah. Um, but this I, is nothing like that, folks. So don't uh, don't be put off by it. It's, no, it's their baby and animals find no babies were harmed yes. in the making of animals. Yes. Um, uh, at all. And uh, in fact, the baby that that hasn't suddenly happened to it, just slept through the entire incident. Um, no, but I, I, mean, I feel so excited to be out on the road with those particular filmmakers in those films, you know, two really amazing female directors, both just so different from each other, making films that are like, you know, ballsy and interesting and trying things and, um, yeah, I mean, how cool is that? So cool. So cool. <laughs> um, Sophie, thank you very much for joining us. Do you, do you want to tell these guys when they can see Animals in Australia? Yeah, Animals is out on September 12th. 
uh, in cinemas across the country. Go and see it.